Nerfcast! five here what what is this apparently we have a guest here let's talk about it slurpcast tv Firon, apparently a cubs fan too that, that's news to me uh, extreme is in his spot mike is in his spot mike quick question uh any puke on that flannel no okay just checking also if maybe you, bags clean pillows been sanitized i want to see if you the viewer has watched, whoa, look at that finger, has watched the last episode, because then you'll get that one. And then we have Taylor. Popular episode. Uh, I think so. Taylor from Taylor Talks Comics. Question one, do you talk comics? All the time. Question two, why do you hate Ethan Van Skyver? <laughs> I don't hate him. Oh. I hate what he stands for. Making money uh, off of outrage media? Grifting people, yeah. I wish I could grip people. Well, question three, are you Extreme's brother? <sighs> um, I've been called that before, yeah. And of why course do you I hate am. What he and why of do you hate I what am. he stands for? Extreme. Ethan Van Skyver? No, Extreme. Oh, I, Extreme I, Mitchell. Oh, I, I love everything he stands for. I wouldn't say everything. Okay. <laughs> Not everything. <laughs> well, the guy wants to play Blood Bowl again. I mean, come on. <laughs> maybe you guys know something I don't. All right. Well, we're going to talk. We know some, we know a lot of things. Uh, we're going to talk about a comic that you recommended to us about a month ago on your last episode you were on and it's called black hammer. We all read it. So I think we should talk about it uh, before we get into it. Is this like a spoilers episode or what? Or, or yeah. No? Spoil it's, how long has it been? I out? Asked, long time. Sorry. Okay. Well, I asked because I did a recording for my radio station thing. And I just try to do an overview. I don't like to tell people, hey, go check out a comic, but I'm also going to tell you what it's about in every little part. I don't know if you want to do the same thing or not. I think we could spoil stuff. No. I think it's important if you're going to talk about a comic okay. to kind of spoil it because it's got some good twists. All right. Well, um, I, I, I have a little bit of a lag, so I don't want to do as much talking as normal. Um, anyone want to give an overview of what the comic's about in these characters? Let's let's give it to Taylor for that. He's yeah. he's the expert, and we're the disciples of the new Black Hammer universe. All right. Um, so Black Hammer is this. I don't know if you can see us. Yep. This new universe that was created by Jeff Lemire and Dean Ormston in about 2016, I think. And uh, it's published by Dark Horse, and it's expanded now. So Jeff Lemire and Dean Ormston. It's a superhero comic, and it's kind of their take on the superhero genre. Um, but they've created this whole universe that's now far expanding into all these spinoffs. Jeff Lemire has still taken, he's still like the lead on everything. Like he's at least had the story by credit on every Black Hammer thing that's come out um, and written most of the scripts. But I like to uh, liken it to Dark Horse's new like Hellboy universe. Because Hellboy, for those familiar, started off as just Hellboy by Mike Mignola. And then it expanded into BPRD and Lobster Johnson and Witchfinder and all these other spinoffs. And now it's like this far expanding thing to the point now with Hellboy to where you don't necessarily need to read Hellboy first. You can jump into BPRD or Witchfinder if you want. And I think Black Hammer will get there eventually. Um, but the main conceit is that it's a not, not a, uh, they're not related by genetics but it's a family of superheroes that are all trapped onto this farm and they're trying to find out a why they're trapped and how to get their way out or how to get out of the farm and each character is you can pretty much pick out their amalgam of like a famous superhero that you're familiar with um but they all have their own brothers and issues that they deal with and then you get to see all the dynamics of the family come together because there's like like any other family, dysfunctional family, there's uh, arguments and that kind of thing. Very dysfunctional. Yeah. And um, it's just a, a rich story. And the thing I love about it the most is that it is a superhero comic, but I feel like it's new reader friendly, as well as 
rewards people have been reading superhero comics for the whole life in that that like whenever people talk about like gateway comics um like what would what comic would you hand to a new reader to get them into the genre or the medium i guess and people like i always see watchmen put up on the list and i think that's like one of the worst choices to give a new reader oh. like oh, I, yeah. I hate when people say that because i think the a lot of what you appreciate about watchmen comes from the fact that you've read comics and you can see what kind of commentaries are doing the thing about black hammer though i feel like is that on its face it's an enjoyable comic that a new reader can read without missing it with or why even though they're missing a lot of that stuff the meta textual kind of commentary that jeff lemire puts in but it rewards people that have been reading super Wolf comics for so many years because it'll be things that are like oh that's what he's kind of making fun of there i, I but, i'd agree with that 100 percent because as you're reading it you get this idea that there's this whole big universe. You have no idea what it is, but you, you see in the back that there's huge depth to this universe, but you don't even need to know that because even as an experienced comic book writer, I don't know the depth of this universe. And mm -hmm. I don't think Jeff Lemire did initially when he first wrote it. He just kind of yeah. alludes to it. But yeah, it's a, it's a great standalone story by itself. Yeah. Even if you take out all that extraneous stuff, it's a great standalone story. Yeah, and you're writing it. it. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say it's great because like, even though there are now five library editions out and even a couple more series that haven't been put in the library edition yet it's not daunting like hellboy is like hellboy has like i feel like 30 to 40 hardcovers at this point someone trying to get into the hellboy universe could feel overwhelmed even, like even to the point where like as the same way as someone would feel overwhelmed by i want to read x-men well where do i start there's been like 60 <laughs> 80 years of x-men or whatever yeah um but this is still like you can still jump in on this i feel like so even new comic book readers or maybe lapsed comic book readers that haven't been in comics for a while that want to read superhero comics but feel daunted by dc or marvel i feel like this is a great jumping on point yeah i mean i can't think of any current marvel or dc series i say yeah jump on this yeah it doesn't exist and it, it's just a lot of times when you see like these super like because i mean there's been a million different incarnations of like I'm going to make my own superhero universe. You know, like Valiant's done, like every, every company's done it. Um, and, and each time you see like, they'll have like, okay, we're going to do the archetypal Justice League. Here's your Superman guy. Here's your Batman guy. And it gets kind of boring that way. Um, but I feel like Jeff Lemire's done such a good job because even the characters he's pulled from. So you have like an Adam Strange character. You have like the Shazam character, the Captain America character. They're all from different universes. Like it's not just like your Justice League. They're all from like, a Marvel character, DC. So seeing them interact with each other is really another rich part of the story as well. It's like, it's not what you expect at all. Yeah. And since it, he started from, you know, ground zero, the the stuff that they kind of make reference to, you're not supposed to know what that is. It isn't like some, like, like in a current comic book, you'd, if they reference something, you'd be like, oh, that could be important. And then you get sidetracked and you you have to research what is this you know what's the backstory behind this this character right, i love that you don't have any backstory when you read it's it's not like yeah. your mcu cookie cutter of well we do an origin story with this hero and then we could show his adventure this is just here's this adventure that's happening and you're going to learn more about these characters as you read on mm. and it's almost become the opposite because now like in the last library edition you see the miniseries for uh, colonel weird and a miniseries for barbarian so like it's almost the opposite where it starts yeah. off with the team and you have all these like plot threads that are kind of like the mystery that's unraveling as you read it and then they kind of build upon that with later spin-offs can we just say how awesome the character oh. names are in this series oh it's ja jack fantastic. sabbath cthulhu yeah. A <laughs> abraham <laughs> slam well Colonel you Weird. know they had um like i there, i wanted abraham slam really, to, huh? to team up with black hammer and it have to be abraham slam and the hebrew hammer <laughs> go ahead jp uh there, there, i don't know there, like i said there's a little lag there was uh, an issue early on probably maybe like 15 through 20 let's say where every character got a mini backstory to help you out anyway so even if you felt that i can't connect to these six characters because they're not justice league or x-men whatever um you got a little something as long as you stuck with it to that point they gave you a little not a lot, but a little taste of how, you know, uh, Abe Slamkowski got to where he is and how Barbie alien got, you know, kicked out of Mars. So you got 
a little bit of it enough to keep. So I like that they did that. So on one hand, you're right of, you can go in fresh and not have any preconceived kind of ideas. Like, oh wait, I don't understand who they are. They did sort of give you a little, all right, we got to give you something. You're sticking with it. Let's give you a one issue deep thing. So I appreciated that. Well, like just, the, just enough to bite onto. Sorry. One of the uh, things you mentioned, like the, like the meta in it that I thought was really cool, like for an, an example of it was uh, Abraham's costume change where the original costume was very much like a golden age costume. And then he had that time where he was trying to keep up with young kids and it was like yeah. a nineties costume. Yeah. Couches and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A new reader would, you know, not recognize that at all, but an established comic book reader would be like, Oh, I see what's going on here. That's kind of cool. But, yeah, it, exactly. but it wouldn't things throw like them that. off. It wouldn't be like, I don't get it. It would just move on. It's just Yeah, things like that. And like the 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 villain in the beginning, what I forget his name, like the dark side archetype. Uh anti god. Yeah, yeah anti god, which is just such a funny, like uh, it, like are you saying with the names? Like they're so like cheesy but clever in a way, because it's like so obvious like what they're going after. Um, it doesn't like he, he never shies away from the what he's trying to do here. Is it? I, I, like I always thought Anti God was like the anti monitor from Green Lantern because his teeth reminded me of that. Yeah, I think he's a kind of a mashup of yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, Probably like a little got, bit. He's got the Galactus head thing too. Yeah, yeah, he was like every go, every every cosmic threat. Yeah, yeah, every Kirby character. I was I was thinking Galactus when I was reading. So. <laughs> yeah, every Kirby. Yeah, every Kirby character, um, which would probably make sense because Lemire is a big Kirby fan. But yeah, so like you see this giant threat and you're like, oh, okay, that's I've read a million different you know big big event comics where like there's like the big giant villain that's going to come in and destroy everything, and that's why the world is the way it is. Um, just like things like that, and and there's even like little little things like that. I wonder if they're exactly commentaries or not, but like even like the story starts off with like a nine panel grid. I wonder if it's like a Watchmen reference. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And then there's like panels in here which are like I don't know if I can find them real fast. Um, it's like the Dark Knight Returns, where like you have like the Talking Heads on TV. Yeah, kind of thing. I don't know. I cannot be able to flip through it fast enough. But things like that, where it's like really small things that you wouldn't pick up on, but they're not even. Necessary. That was also a Spawn thing in the beginning of Spawn. They did a lot of that. Where they had like the network guys talking, and they would have like oh yeah yeah CNN guy, oh, yeah. a Fox News guy, and then they'd have yeah. like a National Enquirer guy. Yeah, that's yeah, that was uh, I think Image did that a lot because they yeah. had that was one thing that connected the Image universe back then was the all the newscasters were, they like, were the, same. the same. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> but it just uh, it's it's hard, and it, the, I love that it's like a mystery at the beginning, and you're like unraveling it as you read, and like there's all these plot threads hanging, like that's a hard thing to do. Because you can lose a reader really fast by doing that. Yeah. Because like when you're reading a new story, you, you kind of want to be told like, "What am I reading here?" Um. So you like just like the confidence in the writing to do that, and to pull it off is, is really impressive. And Jeff Lemire, I think he's one of the best writers going today. Um. And he's the one that got me back into comics. Period. After a few years not reading comics, and it's things like that. It's just like his great storytelling of like not giving you everything up front. But giving you just enough that you want to keep reading like that's not an easy thing to do when with when you're when you're writing a comic and he was really good at just making these people human you know yeah just they're like with abe and uh the girlfriend and mm -hmm. problem with the cop and all that it was just very very realistic i thought so and then yeah like each character arc had an interesting like the way they interacted with the farm was interesting so like abraham he almost got to the point where he's like i kind of like this life like why yeah, are we yeah. why are we trying to leave and yeah, he was and he was the only one that liked the life right and everybody else was like no you're get us out of here but he's like the kind of the leader so it's like that's kind of a terrifying proposition when the leader doesn't want to leave um but he's the only non-powered one too so right yeah which i don't know if that was i'm sure that was discussed i don't know if that was you know but he was he's the only human really so yeah and, and he's the only one that doesn't have any deformities like he can actually you yeah. know yeah live in the real world and not have any sort of struggles there but that's the kind of thing i love about it because like with watchmen which i i love any sort of like comic book that deconstructs superheroes like that i love that kind of i guess subgenre if it is one um but the thing that like alan moore wanted to do with watchmen was he wanted to just deconstruct the superhero genre but his plan wasn't to deconstruct it to where it can never recover. His plan was to deconstruct it 
so people can build upon it and like it, the, the genre itself can grow and become like better from it. Unfortunately, I feel like guys like Mike, uh, Mark Miller or Mark Miller and uh, Garth Ennis, I feel like sometimes they filter everything they've done with superheroes through that lens. And like when you're reading one of their comics, it's just like, okay, I get it. You hate superheroes. Like yeah. I'm reading a superhero comic. I don't want you to insult the medium while I'm reading it kind of thing. <laughs> but I think something like this is exactly what like Alan Moore wanted to come out of that deconstruction because I feel like this is building the next level of what superheroes can be. And it's by, you know, like the Marvel Silver Age had like Spider-Man that like had to go get Aunt May's medicine and he had to worry about his grades and like all these, these real human issues, which is fine. This is like almost another deeper level of that, of like, these each one each character has their own social commentary or social issues they have um, within themselves as far as the story goes but i i think it hasn't descended into what a lot of modern marvel and dc do where it's basically superheroes hanging out eating brunch talking and eating for an entire issue at least something's happening no yeah and that's fair yeah i mean that's a fair criticism of of modern comics i i personally kind of enjoy that it's kind of like the it's like the Quentin Tarantino, like Reservoir Dogs. Everyone's sitting at the yeah. table. Yeah, but the them. dialogue is written by people are making what a dollar a page at this point. And, and again, that's a fair criticism. Some people can do it well, though. Some people my, can. My do favorite well. comic that had that uh, sitting around a diner type thing was The Tick. That was always my favorite parts of The Tick when they were like sitting in the diner, like just shooting shit. Yeah, I mean, it's another one of those kind of uh, commentary on superheroes comic books, but. Now, now, you know more of the history, so I have a question specifically about the art. I got the point of the art. I'm like, yes, Golden Age. No. Yes, is the art is very specifically this way for purpose. It's still not to my taste. I, has, is this his art style of the, of the artist overall, or is this just a specific thing for this? I actually, I don't think I've read any Dean Armston comics besides this one. Okay. So I, I can't really answer that too, too much, but I thought they did do a good job of keeping it per style kind of thing and then i think it was in volume two volume two is where it gets really weird oh that's rich tomaso yeah rich okay, so that, that is an artist see that's another thing i hate when they change an artist in midstream but i think they oh. did it on purpose because he was in the para zone with but Mother. again kind of like a little meta reason dean ormson needed a little bit of a break yeah uh, because he, he had a hand injury I, I forget what happened to him but he had a little bit of hand injury and that's why after issue 12 which is the first library edition, they started doing all the spinoffs because Jeff Lemire didn't want to do any mainline Black Hammer without Ormston. Mm -hmm. And he had some sort of hand injury, like I said. Um, so he did all the spinoffs with other artists. Um, but I, I think- I still didn't, like I, think I can, I can get used to an art style, but I never quite liked it. Okay. I, I mean, I the loved one, it personally, but- the only, Yeah, I, I really liked the art style. The one thing I didn't like is- um, some of the female faces were really similar, like Gail and was it Tammy? Tammy? Yeah. Or, yeah. Like, sometimes I looked at them and I was like, I found is, them is this, like older I Gail found them or? off. The female faces especially were off-putting to me. I, w I was hoping that uh, Tammy or Tammy Titty or whatever they call her, um, I was hoping that it was going to be like, like related to Gail maybe because they had the same face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Dragonfly, man, Dragonfly looks different, but I, I'm sorry. I like. I like. I want more hot, hot ladies in my comics. Do you, Do you prefer a more like realistic style to your art? Yeah, I still like stylized. I don't know. It's just it, like I thought they were leading really hard into the golden age simplistic style, and I okay. thought like it got to the point where like I get it. Yeah, but I don't know. Like some of the some of it came off well. Like I I thought that like the backgrounds I love. And like the dragonflies was it her house of horrors. I love the art style around that. Um, but it was, it seemed like, I don't know, it just, like the not enough detail in the character's faces. How do you feel about the, the Rich Tommaso issues? Is that the one like these? Yeah. Yeah, yeah was, I did not. No, it was a hard pass for me. Which, which ones were those? Is that later on? In it's in, it's in volume two of the library editions. It's two I remember. It's where they uh, all split like, up and, and Captain Weird goes into and he meets with the, the yeah, goose. I, I'm kind of with Biron on that one. I didn't really like the changeover, but I mean, I'm going to obviously stick with it because it was, you know. I got it as the, a thematic choice to like, he's in this different reality and that's why things look different. But, yeah, uh, and that's what I love about it too. Because I, I too hate when you're in the middle of a long run and someone's art changes, 
which is a criticism I've, I've heard with the new the current spider-man run it's like since they're doing weekly the art artist changes from week to week yeah because they just can't probably do that much right so there's one week that ben riley has like completely blonde hair and the next week he has like half brown half blonde hair and it's like you can't do that what you're doing like i think it's you have editors hardly any editors working anymore and they're paid yeah that's terrible but at least in this reason they had a storyline reason for why it changed right i like that too it's like because that kind of helps you bring you into the story too it's like to have colonel weird go into another dimension in the art style change so drastically kind of pulls you into like but then the idea gets, like, that sometimes it is they hit a home run like i think talkie walkie looks amazing here oh i think all the character designs are great so i meant to ask you guys on the colonel weird subject how did you read his voice in the in the the way they had it written i whatever it was the wavy lines i think of like a I am good. Yeah. Weird. I, I was I was feeling fucking weird myself <laughs> reading it. Like, am I supposed to read it like a ghost? That's how um, I did. I totally read uh, it like a ghost. So then I was thinking, do I just maybe read it like old man, like like back like back in my day? I just I it, it was I actually didn't. I get why they're doing that and his sort of I don't know I, I guess purpose of the way where he was, but. I don't know. I, I I'm not huge on when they completely change the like add that lettering style. I don't know. You know what I mean. I also didn't understand. Did they ever explain why he is that way? Because oh like, yeah, not, not only just oh, yeah. talking weird, but his dementia and yeah, yeah. That, that he's one of my favorite characters in the in the whole comic book for that reason because he's like so he has traveled through so many different dimensions and timelines that his mind is just completely gone. So he is. Oh, that he's like in, he's in multiple planes of existence at once, isn't he? Yeah, and like, yeah, can you yeah. just imagine what your brain would go through going through all different dimensions and I'd timelines? I'd be fine. I know I'd be fine. <laughs> but the thing I like about it, though, is he's like that old man that like has all these crazy theories and crazy things to say, and he's maybe maybe drunk a little bit, maybe just office rocker. But the terrifying thing is when you start to realize some of his theories are correct, it's like, holy crap. Like, we thought he was just like this cuckoo guy at the yeah. bar spouting But then off he was able to stab thing. out of it for, for dinner with Tammy. Yeah. Well, yeah. he's he's supposed to be really old, right? Yeah. Like very like cuz I mean his wasn't his story from They were all World the, War 2 era, weren't they? I thought he was yeah. like from the from the 50s. Yeah, but or, I think he I think he's a little bit older than Abraham Slam even in that era. Yeah. yeah. Can we also talk about why why are Martians so anti-gay? Well, don't you think that that maybe Mars is a reflection of some areas of Earth? Like Schomburg? No, like Lake Zurich, Illinois. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> the gay thing is a little heavy handed a, a bit, but. I, I, Barbarian. Bar- Barbalian. Or Barbie, yeah. as Gail calls him. Yeah, Barbie. Barbie. Uh, Barbalian is my favorite character. I, uh, I I think he's so snarky, and the fact that he's snarky gay, it's even funnier. Uh, well, I loved his relationship with Gail, even though I didn't like Gail that much. Oh, I like it. Yeah, but I like their. Favorites. Oh, I like Gail a lot. They're my they're my two favorite characters. So. Yeah, and her spinoff thing was really good too. So, yeah, I just <laughs> I'm I'm just happy there's a like you know Martian Manhunter type character because I always like that when they put that in. Yeah, Taylor, you mentioned like Garth Ennis, so. In looking at like the boys, you know, they have their versions of popular superheroes. So you have Jack from Jupiter, you have here we have uh we have Mark Mark that. Mark Martz, uh John Johns. Uh so I love that. Yeah. And like again, the name the names are like cheesy and like obviously pointing to what they're supposed to be, but because the story's so written so well, it, it's not cheesy at all. But oh, and I don't even honestly when it's that close maybe some people might get upset i i think it's great because <laughs> yeah that, me too. It, it, there's always that part of me whenever i see um superheroes written from a different universe and they're trying to be somebody where i have to uh in my own head like theorize like or who are they supposed to be are they supposed to you know is abraham slam um is he captain america no he's not he's more kind of like a vigilant so like i actually like when it's spelled out because then i don't have to think about that anymore no, I, yeah, I agree with that. But Barbalian, I think his story is and tremendous. And the fact that he's like such a badass on Mars too is, is cool. Um, but just like each character has their own own issues. Like the fact that he 
is an outcast on earth because he's you know an alien but he can transform himself to look like a human so he's kind of got that going then he becomes an outcast because he he's gay on earth but it seems like earth is slightly more okay with gay because they didn't exile him yes. at any point did you say in your head galian or no <laughs> yes okay i know you did he just couldn't get couldn't get over himself <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I really love about it is like every character does have their own issues and they're all real. Like it's so hard to like pick a favorite because every single one of them is like so well, I don't know, there's so much to each of them. Like I, Gay Abe was my favorite. But Gabe? Gay Abe? I, you know, I, we, Abe. All, we all knew your favorite was going to be Abraham Slam. We yeah. all knew that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're an Abraham but, Slam mark. I, I still like I think when it, I, I, I don't it, remember it, but was there ever a point where where Abraham Slam said, "I'm getting too old for this shit"? <laughs> Wait, do you think he looks like Danny Glover? Because I do. <laughs> he looks like one of the guys from um, King of the Hill to me. Oh, like yeah, one of the yeah. one of the one of his buddies. They're out to get us. Yeah. When I was reading it, I think it's before Extreme. Was I reading it before you? And I took that picture, and I'm like, oh yeah, I can tell you because it was the picture of Abraham Slam. When he was, he looked like a Blood Bowl player because he was in like cable gear. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think, so, I think what you would you say to it. someone who's a reductivist who just said, "Oh, it's just a Matrix ripoff"? A, a Matrix ripoff? Yeah. I don't know. I guess I don't. I don't get the reference there. Uh, the entire barn and town were. Oh, playing. okay. Which, I don't know. Wait, I, I, Fearon, that, I didn't see the Matrix. What are you saying? <laughs> I, is it, is I it honestly, good? I'm not a big Matrix fan. I've, I watched it a hundred years ago, so it feels like. Yeah. So it went over my head. Were you, um, were you but, born when it came out, you youngins? Oh, yeah. Of course. I was like 11. <laughs> <laughs> like 11. It, it was like 98, right? 98? Yeah. yeah I was 11. Um, but that's the thing though is like they borrow from so many different things it's not like i don't think you could call it a direct ripoff of anything you could no, say no, it I, was just, thing. I was being reductivist but i did i did get heavy matrix vibes out of out of volume one more specifically than volume two and what, what i really appreciated too like reading volume one like it felt like it came to an end i was like oh so now they're just gonna go back to spiral city it's gonna be like a standard superhero book but then with the volume two it was like oh no here's this whole other twist and shit got weirder and different yeah. and i want to ask Fear, Fearon, what yeah what did you think about that whole section with the the ideas I, I don't again i don't know how much we want to say if whatever like the ideas and the the creators of these things you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. i only read the core stories the expanded stuff i didn't read no it was the core story oh, oh. I, I don't know how much we oh when the that. creators their heads are in the clouds mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah i didn't know very, how much we want like what we're talking about i felt I felt it was a little philosophy freshman year in college. Yeah. I, I in their own farts that. a little bit. A little bit. When of I was reading farts. it, I was thinking in my head, like, if if you ever read this, you're going to be rolling your eyes on this whole. Yeah. This whole it was a little, I go to college and I took philosophy and now I think we're all Plato's <laughs> cave, blah, blah, blah. Why, why are you doing Homer Simpson voice? No. Oh. But it, it fit with a story, so I'll give it to him, okay. I guess. But I, I what I and maybe there is one in the in the spinoff series. But I would like a horror series just about Bed of Dragonfly or House of Horrors. I think there's a lot of potential there. Did they ever really do a spinoff of just her stuff? That I don't think they have because I think I think yeah. they talked about it though. I think but the, the only spinoffs I think they've done of the characters within the main team have been Barbalian and yeah. Um, yeah. Who's the other one? Barbalian and I, I don't think Colonel she Weird. has one yet. There, there definitely has to be at some eventually. Though. Like I could see I a specific will. horror genre thing about her. Is that because that was the only character you could fap to, Biron? It was. Well, the sheriff too, a little bit. Well, they did do the. I don't know which. <laughs> I don't know which volume it is, but I know it was the free comic book day issue one year. It was Madame Dragonfly, and it was like EC Comics horror vibes, where she was like. I don't know if you guys have read. Oh, that was one. They put one. Oh, of the yeah. Covers in there, the right? covers. Yeah. You saw it in the covers in the back. Yeah. They showed. Yeah. EC. Yeah. But like how there's like the, the Crypt Keeper and stuff. Like, so she's like kind of introducing you to like the House of Horrors kind of thing. Duran's a Crypt Keeper fan, though, too. Tales yeah. from the Crypt. He lo loves it. We actually have one at our local gaming store. 
that that free comic book day issue isn't collected in any of the stuff though is it i was looking through all the lists i didn't see it listed under any of the collected trades or hardcover. that's where i'm gonna run into issues because i feel like i i know i've read that issue because i got the single issue when it came out but i don't know if it's in these and this series is also another example of why these collected volumes are so great oh for sure because i got to the cliffhanger after volume one and i was like oh amazon yeah. it'll be here tomorrow no on, on that note not just collected editions but can we also talk about oversized oh the and 30 bucks library editions 30 well, bucks. yeah also beer on yeah point for the pores i know you're one of those uh, yeah you're one of the pores with those fucking 600 <laughs> figures on your desk but like the not only bigger like to hold but bigger prints it yeah. was awesome. I loved all every comic should have a not only hardcover omni, but, but fucking bigger. Even bigger than an omnibus. Yeah. But still fits in a collax. Yeah, I, I for my money, I think the Dark Horse Library Edition is the best format of collected editions out there. Am yeah, I the only one that kept on seeing? Is there another page I'm missing? Because the paper is so thick. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I would usually too. like I would do like an extra flick a like, lot eh. of times to make sure I didn't grab one an extra page. Yeah. Yeah, like because they've done they've done Hellboy in this format. They did an Umbrella Academy. They've they're doing Madman right now. If anybody's like a Mike Allard fan, All Red fan, um, Madman's being released. Those are a little bit more expensive. Those are like hundred bucks cover price, but they're like six hundred and fifty pages, so they're thicker. But no, I, I and I will say the the prices are. I've noticed the prices of the library editions are going up a little bit. They seem to be where where it was forty nine ninety nine now seems to be like fifty nine ninety nine. All is going up because of the paper. And, yeah. yeah, these issues, these these editions should have been seventy bucks, probably. Yes. Yeah. You know, no, they're, they're you beautiful. Did. Yeah. Um, I will say you, my one my one complaint about them, and I Dark Horse says this a lot, is the dust jacket is exactly the same as the art underneath it. That you like to mix it. You like to mix it up. I like it to be different underneath, or else don't have a dust jacket. I understand the purpose of a dust jacket, but like, it's would like you a, prefer no art on the actual cover then? No, I prefer like either. At, like at a minimum, lot of the DC have, ones do that, where it's different on the. Yeah, at minimum, have it without the letters, so you can just see just the art yeah. on the board. But I have a cool like um, wraparound cover, maybe. Mm -hmm. This is you have the oversized art, kind of use it. But just have the exact same imagery. It's like I don't know. It makes you want to throw away the dust jacket, but then. But the you can't. Value goes down. Yeah. Yeah. Like every comic book person. So, yeah. <laughs> did you guys like? Uh, at the end of the volume two, all the little like bio sheets yes. on everybody, yes. including yes. the ones that we Han haven't talked about yet. Handbook of the Marvel so, Universe, my favorite. Yeah. yeah. So reading those got me super excited about the Black Hammer 45 story. So I'm hyped for getting into the world of Black Hammers now. <clears throat> Have you seen the artwork though? No, not yet. Oh, it's rough. Oh no. <laughs> Mike, Mike. <laughs> I'll just tell you. Just, just be ready. Why don't they just hire Pepe Larraz? No, <laughs> Ivan he, he, Reyes. Where's Ivan Reyes? Get him there. Mike's Mike's ragging on uh, Matt Kent's artwork, who I'm a fan of. I love Matt Kent. But um, it's... Mike hates yeah. him. I'm not saying I hate him. I'm just he saying... He's a person. It was jarring. <laughs> well, the thing is, Mike, Matt Kent's and Jeff Lemire's art styles are pretty similar. I don't know if you guys have read anything that Jeff Lemire did the artwork for. Um, his we only artwork read is what you tell us to read. Well, I have some. I have some Jeff Lemire <laughs> recommendations here, actually, um, to show off at the end if you guys have time. But at the end of the first library edition, they show because originally Black Hammer was going to be Jeff Lemire doing the art and story, but he just couldn't fit into a schedule. At the end of the library edition of the first volume, when they have character bios back there, it's like the original concept characters, and you get to see the way Jeff Lemire drew those characters, which is kind of cool um but his style is similar to matt kent's it's a little bit more accessible i guess the matt kent's matt kent's i can i was just kidding i understand why people don't like it um i prefer stylized art i don't like photorealistic art i think that's boring to me but well not as bad as when it's like digital art that they trace over that some of the cheap ass marvel books do that's that's annoying to me but even like alex ross like alex ross is like amazing i'm not saying that he's not untalented but i don't prefer that in my comics i want my comics to look like comics rather than people in in costumes i like i could alex ross cover though would be nice yeah um i think his covers on immortal hulk 
were have been the best work of his career because they're that, those are a little bit more stylized yeah. it's kind of like the horror vibes going on there the body um, horror but, stuff in immortal hulk was really good yeah so i like alex's ross's covers on that run but yeah so anyway so black hammer 45 um i have the it here if you want me to show off some of the artwork i don't know if you guys might start that. vomiting but he's got his flannel to mop it up so <laughs> I got a toilet over here too, so yeah. yeah, I can clean it up. So I don't have as much table space here. I gotta move things around. So this is a uh, World of Black Camera Volume Two that this is in, and it has Black Camera Forty Five in the Quantum Age. But here's like Abraham Slam. Oh, geez. Let's see that work. So it's kind of like sketchy. Yeah. It's like watercolor painted. And the here's like the team. Black camera 45. We asked this before you got on. Is if the hammer, because it's it's Thor where whoever holds the hammer becomes black hammer. If it went to a white guy, would it still be black hammer or would he be white hammer? It reminds me uh, of, of the Key and Peel skit where they were doing the Power Rangers. And they kept on referring to Key yeah. as, as Black Black Ranger, even though he was driving the blue. I haven't seen that Key and Peel sketch, but I, I feel That's like it's also it, a throwback to seventies Marvel, where it was Black Goliath and yeah. Black, Black Panther. Panther and Luke Cage. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, Black, yeah, Black Luke Cage. Yeah. That, that that is a designation people give Luke Cage. He's the first superhero to not have black in his title. Yeah, the first black superhero to not have black in his title. Oh yeah, because he's from the '60s, right, or '70s? '70s. 70s. Yeah. yeah, he's in that that weird '70s Marvel decade that I'm falling in love. Did he with. have like big disco collar on his costume? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. he like, had the the chest with the things coming yeah, across. Kind of like Nightwing, and he, he'd say things like "Sweet Christmas." Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. They should have put that in the next Netflix, Netflix show as a as a little <laughs> Easter egg. Sorry, I couldn't skip this. Oh, does your Alexa go off whenever you do like racist things, Biron? <laughs> no, because they'd be going off all the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's my uh, Apple female-ish name device. I don't want to say it. Hmm. Just say we'll set it off. Yeah. Is it is it Black Alexa? <laughs> Have you seen that skit? No. On Saturday Night Live? No. Oh, it's it's Alexa Silver. Uh, so it, it answers to Allegra and uh, all the other names that because old people can't remember what her name is. And that's funny. It, it's worth checking out. So, anyway, okay. so the library edition, we all read volumes one and two. Is it a new story arc with three or is it ongoing or what? So there isn't a three um after well, it's come, one and two it's coming out right well the okay so there's so there's black hammer volume one and two library edition and then there's world of black hammers one two and three and the world of our little spinoffs the next black hammer series in the mainline continuity has just started i don't even know if the first issues come out yet but it's called black hammer reborn which is kind of a commentary on uh, there's three issues out at least yeah, okay three i issues. actually i i don't think i put those on the pull list because my thought would be by the time i get to it the library probably gonna, gonna be out. Yeah. yeah i probably won't bother that's what, I, that's what i'm banking on um but we won't see that probably if they're on issue three that'll finish up probably next yes yeah, so, so it's like 2023 will probably be the next time we see a library edition for that i do think we'll see another world of volume four because they have the unbelievable unteens yeah. mini series, which just ended i think and then they have skull boy and or Skull Digger and Skeleton Boy? Yep. Yeah, Skeleton Boy, yeah. That one ended a few months back, so I, I'm assuming they'll throw both of those into um, a library edition. And then, to make things even more confusing, so they have, um, they came out with the Black Hammer versus Justice League story mm -hmm. that Jeff Lemire wrote. I forget who did the art. It wasn't Dean Ormston. Um, but they've only released that in a standard size hardcover, which is weird. And then they also have Black Hammer Visions, which the second... That's going to be two standard size hardcovers as well. 
the second volume comes out like next week or something. And that's where different <laughs> creators did stories for Black Hammer. I think like uh, Biron's uh, favorite, Patton Oswalt, did a, a story. Yes. And I liked his Modoc series. So I just don't like him. Well, you might like that one then, the one that he wrote for that. But those are being two standard size hardcovers too. So I hope they eventually throw those into a library edition. I don't want I that hate... on my shelf. It's going to mess up. I know. I hate all the TV. format changes. I have I purposely not bought the Justice League or the World or the Visions ones because of that reason. I'm hoping. I don't know if we'll see the Justice League one in it because that might be like well, a right. Can I ask you guys in general if if there's so much, how do they look on the shelf? Things that go on in your brains. What about the fact that you have issues of, well, you have issues, period, but yeah. the, you have actual floppies, if you will, and then you have trades or omnis. That doesn't bother you at all? Floppies go to box. Yep. Bag exactly. board box. But I mean, but still, you have two different formats, aren't you? Isn't that just driving you nuts in your head? No. It, it seems like I was introduced to Black Hammer Universe, the library edition, so I want to stick with it. Well, Biron, I mean, you sometimes you get trades just to catch up. Yeah. But then you get to, you know, you start buying issues. But also, if the next Black Hammer Library Edition is until 2023, I'll probably be ready just to reread those because they're such a fast read anyway. Yeah. They really are. That's one joke I always make about them. It's like, I'm glad they come with a ribbon, but why do they even come with a ribbon? Because I read them in one sitting anyways. But... Well, I don't, I don't poop that long. <laughs> But hey, Biron, do, you think, do you think we're actually going to still be talking to you in 2023 or no? I'll be dead of the diabetes by then. Oh, that's that's. Or he might be he might be canceled. You know what? I, not you not with canceled, our 187 subscribers, I won't be. I'd like to send Biron <laughs> Biron to the para zone before he gets canceled. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's why I purposely have not been collecting in the singles. I to answer your question, Johnny P. I don't like having one comic in two different formats like that anyway. So if I were to collect it in singles and then upgrade to a like, nice hardcover, I'd probably sell the singles. Yeah. I, what I've been doing is because I, on one hand, I've always bought trades forever, but I've just relatively recently started doing pull lists again. And yeah, I mean, there's to the point of, I, I'm going to have these two, but there is something fun about going to the store and getting something new though. And keeping up with something. So oh, there is. Yeah. I, I don't see myself, you know, and then there's also that whole thing which happens all the time with let me get issue one, see if I like it. Two, usually I try to give it three. You know, usually I, I might bail on a two, but try to give it three to see if I want to stick with it. But yeah, on one hand, it would be cool to have them all continued on the shelf. But, you know, there's also, so I, I'm kind of getting a combination. What I'm running to it, what I, the problem I'm running to is, because I'm getting involved in these omnis that I want to read through because it is an easy read to have it right there. I end up getting things pulled and sit in a box and I'm like, well, I'll just get to it eventually. And it's like the whole idea of getting to it eventually could have been solved by not getting it at all. And then waiting until it becomes yes. a collected edition. I, so it's literally defeating <laughs> the whole reason why I'm getting things pulled anyway. Yes. I've, I've ran into the issue since I've started like a small pull list is I've gotten, like, I've, I've accumulated like, one, two or three issues. I'm like, I'll just, I'll just wait till issue four comes out, then I'll read them. I'm like, but it's the same exact thing as a trade paperback. Like, right. what do I, do? I know. Like, the idea yeah. is to read it monthly. And to, like, exactly. So well, even, it. you mentioned about some other Jeff Lemire books. Um, so I have, uh, I have uh, Primordial, which I like a lot. And, um, and May, May's book, I added, but I only got two and three. I have to order number one. Um, have you read those yet? I'm not. I'm waiting for those in collected editions too. Because okay. um, my whole idea with the pull list is I only wanted to do it for a short time. I didn't want to do it forever. It's just I wanted to like kind of experiment because I never had a pull list before until this year. So I'm trying not to add any new series to it. I, I failed well, on that it, a little bit here and it's there. It's so hard because there's so few true ongoing now of new stuff. It's all mm -hmm. five issues. It's all, we'll do five issues, then a trade. Five issues, then a trade. Yeah. There's no ongoing <laughs> anymore. So I haven't um, read either of those series, but I'm excited to read them. May's book, though, that's the one that Jeff Lemire did the art for. So if you've yeah. at least flipped yeah, through it. Yeah, I only got two and three, so I actually haven't read it because I'm waiting to get one. That one there, for some reason, there's not like a reprint going on and Diamond's having issues or whatever with yeah. stores getting that. But um, yeah, that looked really good. Um, just kind of a quick skim. I, you know, I'm picking up what they had. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trim my pull list to five issues, which is the minimum to maintain it because of the discount. Yeah. Um, but you, you mentioned Primordial. One of the books I had to recommend 
was Gideon Falls. You recommended it last time, and I bought it. You cost me more money. Have you read it I, yet? Uh, I have not. That's I, I'm oh. almost done with Batman. And when I finish that, I'll either do start this or else I have Middle West by Scotty Young. Oh yeah, that's a good one. So, yeah. You know what's funny is so I, I bought Gideon Falls with a I got an Amazon gift card for my birthday for my mother in law, and I said she's like, "What did you get with it?" And I said, "I got this." And I said, "So now she goes, oh." Is it a, a book like a book for Catholics or something like like that? I'm like, yeah, I'm getting into that now. Catholics are allowed to, in fact, read it. So you're, <laughs> it's yeah. just him in Barnes, not, by the way. He's it's not, not a book for Catholics. I mean, yeah, one of the main characters is a priest. Right. That's you, I sent her a little, the little. She looked at the synopsis, and I'm like, I'm like, well, oh, don't want. You, you feel Jeff Lemire has some unresolved issues with church stuff. Well, the. Um, so the, the Gideon Falls Volume One came out. Th this is one of those comics that I, I bought the first trade paperback for, and I loved it so much. It was only the first six issues that I sold that, and I was waiting for hardcovers. And I'm so pissed because they have not announced a Volume Two yet. They haven't even announced it yet, so I don't even know if it's coming out next year at all. And that's what will conclude the series. I was, was hoping that a cliffhanger that bummed me out. Yeah, because I was hoping it would be like 27. It's only 27 issues, so I was hoping they'd just do like a thicker one volume hardcover. But they like money, I guess um but that's got and andre sorrentino art which is just like amazing the things that he does with panel layouts and stuff is just insane to me like it's like unlike anything else that you'll see in comics and it's a, it's a horror story yeah um i don't and know i've if, been way into horror comics lately so yeah like his art style is just amazing sorry i'm, I'm touching my mic over here that, that probably came out wrong um but it's like it's a fantastic the thing one of the reasons why it's on my recommendation list for Jeff Lemire stories is because like Black Hammer how it's uh you got a lot of plot threads unraveling it as once as you read it it's like got a big mystery to it Gideon Falls is even more like that I've not watched Twin Peaks but it, he's compared it to that a lot of people have compared it to Twin Peaks I don't know I know you guys grew up in the nineties did any of you guys watch Twin Peaks that was for the drama drama kids not you know what's funny is that was always on my list of shows to go back and watch one day because people that i like always talk about how great it was but i've never actually watched it it's one of those <laughs> things it when it was going on it was great because it was like the event yeah you know what everyone's talking about i don't know if it holds up i've been afraid to go back and watch it again because it hold up. Guy. yeah uh, I think the first season is still really great. The second season, it, it goes off the rails. You know, yeah. It gets really weird. Yeah. And then they, they did a new season for it too, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, like Netflix or something? Yeah, yeah something like that. And there was That's a movie, good, I, right? Firewalk with me? Yeah. That was I, I, do want, I do want to watch it because just like Johnny P, what he was saying, like so many people have talked about how it's like their favorite show. Yeah. People that I like have said that. So I, it makes me want to watch the show. But um, this gets a lot of comparisons to it. But it's great because it's like a horror mystery. And the mystery is unraveling as you read through it. And it's about like a homeless guy that's like digging through trash and he finds like <coughs> clues to what's going on in the city. And you have like a priest character. They're like those are the two main characters. And they're unrelated. Like they don't know each other yet. But then they're, you, the whole mystery is like how their stories connect. And then there's this mysterious red barn um, involved as well. But it's just fantastic. Like it's a page turner. And that's why like, I'm mad um, that volume two is not even solicited yet. Like it makes you not want to read it yet because I'm, I feel like I'm going to be mad at the end of so 2016 or whatever. If, if uh, I don't know when that's going to come up in my next group of reading, but if I get to the point where I finish it and I'm like, I need something, do I go and get the issues then? Yeah. I mean, it, it's available. Oh, I guess you said you don't like reading digitally. Um, uh, yeah, I say, it. It's available digitally. Um, it's just 11, 11 more issues, though. And, and issue 27 was like a super long issue. I think it was like 78 pages or something. You know what they need? A deluxe slipcase version of everything. <laughs> that would be cool. With, like, with some flocking on it. I was thinking like some like red moss. Yeah. Yeah. With, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, it's like the swamp thing thing. Like, like when you see a toy, that like the little <laughs> circles cut out and it says, touch me here. Like just so you can get a feel yeah. for what it's gonna be like, and then and then and that then, part of the toy is like rubbed off completely. Right, then that part's all fucking dirty, and I'm like, well, if I'm gonna take one, I'm not taking the one in the front. That's right. With all the yeah. fucking marks on it. 
Funny so, you say that though. Jeff Lemire is writing a uh, Swamp Thing miniseries soon. Oh, okay. I've been collecting the current one. It's like a ten issue. It's been pretty good. Oh, the Ram V one. Yeah. Yeah, this one I forget who's on the art. It might be Sorrentino. I don't know. He works with Sorrentino so much now. Yeah, it's, the art is very striking. So Speaking of Sorrentino, Black Hammer in the Resolution. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone here is a a fan of the Dragonlance Chronicles series of books. No. Um, the whole premise is. Um, you can't have light and dark one dominate the other. It's got to be in balance. <clears throat> so the whole premise is the anti-god is going to come back because the good guys are back. The, the yeah. light is back, so the anti-god has to come to bring balance. But they're not traditionally <clears throat> that necessarily good guys. I didn't think. <clears throat> Maybe Abraham Slam, but... How do we know anti-god's not super bad guy then? Yeah. I, know, I thought it was kind of cheap, like the whole Maybe. thing was, oh, got to maintain the balance, but did, did you not so like that? evil, but they were they were operating more in the gray area. You didn't like the whole like balance of the force kind of style? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I thought it could have been a more clever ending. Well, I I guess the, the idea was, do you want to see them just somehow find a way to return yeah. and everything back to normal? Or is that well, one of my favorite parts of it is expected? when Black Hammer, the new Black Hammer, the daughter of the former Black Hammer, was basically having to having to race through the the dark house, all the different realms there, was, including yeah. Hell. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I'd have been okay if they never got back. I like that at, towards the end of their time on, on the farm, uh, Madam Dragonfly just decided to give them everything they want. I mean, the idea. Well, there's also that concept of. What if we're just let's just stay here and say fuck it and this is our this is our home. Yeah. Whatever. But it, it did remind me of the matrix of like we tried to give you an ideal world, but you didn't believe it. So that's why I had to make it all shitty. I think I would have stayed at the farm. Yeah. I but here's the thing, like, like Tammy Tammy's, especially yeah. with, with with that titty Tammy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the the and, thing is and like the, their the whole sheriff who you know, sometimes you know, not a, not a horrible guy all the time. Not all the time. He didn't stalk his ex-wife all the time. Right. There were times when he wasn't active. You know what? Singer. The sheriff was tough but fair. We right. all know an authority figure in our lives. You got to have one of those. And guess what? A library where the books don't have words? Uh, that, hello. I love that because that's, it took someone true. new, the new um, daughter of Black Hammer, it took someone new to, to again pursue what's going on here, whereas everyone else has just accepted their fate. Yeah. Well, and then, and then like, when she, the books are all empty, and then Madame Dragonfly is like, "Oh shit!" Now they're yeah, right. <laughs> like, uh, it's like you know, it's like us doing a Slurpcast episode. You know, like, I mean? oh like, shit! Just, oh, we got to talk about this. Uh, but I mean, yeah, hey, let's take somebody new. We we saw, hey, this guy tried to get out of the bubble, and um, <laughs> and but, he ooh. turned into liquid. Yeah, let's uh, let's no go. Let's just say, you know what? Everybody find somebody cool, get together, let's have dinner once a week. And, you know, have a life. My only fear is they, they keep going back to the well, like, oh, no, this was a simulation as well. And this was a simulation as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think Jeff Lemire is a, better, a good enough writer to uh, yeah. not get to that point. Um, but, Madam, I mean, have, have any of you guys read the, like, the old Marv Wolfman, George Prez, New Teen Titans run? Some. I was going to say, I feel um, like Mike probably read like it. Like 30, 40 years ago when they, oh, oh the new run? No, no, no. The back then, the original one, Judas yeah. contract, and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mike, you read comics forty years ago. Yeah. But so did like I. 40, aren't you like forty-three? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> but anyway, so like in that story, Raven is like the metaphysical, paranormal type character, like Madame Dragonfly is. I feel like that's like the stand-in for. Yeah, I can Matt, see that. Madame Dragonfly is going to be, or is is, well, in that run though, Raven was kind of like this mysterious cloud always hanging over the titans so like they might have an issue where they run off and fight some other people but there's always this hanging cloud um so i feel like it, it became like raven was the most important of the titans at that point and i think that's kind of what we're going to get with madam dragonfly i feel like even they might even go off on some other adventure but there's always gonna be this black cloud hanging over their head that kind of solves what actually the true issue is um and that might lead into it but, but what i was thinking of when i was reading it was like which one of us has created this world that we live in right now? And why is my imagination so evil? Yeah, like, why, why is Biron a fucking, like, dick in creating this world for us? 
he is the anti god. So, but I will say this for, for all my, yes. as they will say, niggles aside. What aside? Niggles. All right, little lag there. I heard something. <laughs> niggles aside, it unlike most comics, I thought about it well after I finished reading. Yeah. So I didn't love the ending, but the journey there was enough where I really enjoyed the ride. So did you like the whole um, sort of the idea of the concept of heroes and do we need them and do we need, do we need to step up to the challenge if we that that kind of stuff? No. Okay. It's been done yeah. before. It's yeah, it was. And also sure. at the point where they confront the anti god, are they the only heroes left? In Spiral City? He, I think a lot of them did die. I don't know. There probably is going to be some that get uncovered in yeah. later things. Yeah, but I, think I did that, like that Gail fell in love with um, the undead that's not undead guy, Professor Frankenstein. Sherlock Frankenstein? Frank, Sherlock Frankenstein. Frank, Sherlock oh, that Frankenstein. Frankenstein. So he, he's, he's got a, 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 his own comic, right? Yeah, backstory. It, which yeah, he, had, he had the, the first okay. spinoff was his, his story. The first spinoff, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So it's not a zombie, by, right? That's in the World of Black Hammer Volume 1. Um, it's the the first comic in that run or in that that edition but that's got art by dave rubin who's amazing he's one of my favorite artists um i don't it is stylized so i don't know if it'll be your guys's cup of tea but i need sexy ladies does it have sexy ladies in costumes that wouldn't possibly exist no no yeah i don't, I don't. it's got like cool lovecraftian type monsters though i mean how, how can you go wrong with that well you got Here, are, you, are you saying that the volumes one and two didn't have enough for you in that regard the madam dragonfly was the only one i really okay. thought about. What, what about uh i lucy? think tammy titties could have been but her face looked weird what about lucy uh hammer is that her name i forgot her name i liked her when she suited up better yeah, I thought you, you got that green streak that. in her hair it, she reminded me a little bit of bride of frankenstein because she had this in volume two she had like this green streak in her hair She does not look anything like this, by the way. Yeah. Beer, question, Biron, if you didn't know us and they didn't have this episode and you saw that cover on the shelf, are you buying I would this? not buy it, no. Okay. <laughs> I, get that. I know that 100% to be true. <laughs> and we appreciate your honesty. <laughs> but be honest, would you have bought a comic with this cover either? You know what? You're I right. would have. <laughs> well, no, yeah. you're, you're right. You're totally right. I don't think I would have bought either of them because I would be afraid of how much they cost just looking at them because they look like they're expensive. Yeah, you wouldn't, you would like, I'm not even going to pull this off the shelf. This looks like a $120 book. Well, <laughs> you, I mean, you don't really know, unless you know what it's about or know what it's, you, know, you, you know, if you see the cover of Black Hammer, you probably are thinking like we talked about earlier, like the, you know, the 70s kind of. Or I, I, or I would think it's Marvel's Voices tokenism issue one, you know? Yeah. So I didn't that, read you can't those. judge a book I discover. And also I didn't read those volumes. I just read the digital comics. Mm -hmm. So okay. volume one is Black Hammer one to thirteen, right? Yeah. yeah. And so what is volume two? It's Age of Doom or something, or um it's it's yeah, one so through twelve. The, uh, one through twelve of Age of Age whatever of Doom. the yeah. Age of Doom. And yeah. then and then and the, it's also uh, got the Black Hammer. Cthulhu Louise. Yeah, the little one shot. And then it's got I, the, I appreciate the, the, the fun puns like Blood Bowl names. I'm, yeah. You know, with that kind of stuff. Cthulhu his, his, his naming game is on point. I'll give yeah. you that for sure. And then it's got the World of Black Hammer Encyclopedia, which is what they're talking about. Yeah. It's like the old Marvel handbook. Bir Biron identified with the Louise character a lot from his days in school, I, I think. I, I wasn't a bully, but I supported the job they did. Oh, I thought you were Louise. No. Oh, I was a football player. I was gonna say he's too big to be, you know. He's a football player, but you know, there's probably got bullied. I think by the. Do you have any any levels above football in Conan his, High his School? His older brother. Sean Sean nope, no one is brother. above football. Oh, okay. And I like that the quote is from Scott Snyder that not that a hole, uh, Fat Oswald. His is on the back. He might be Pat Oswald does talk about this series quite a bit. He's on volume light. one. I don't think his quotes are on volume two. Uh, maybe it was on the... He has one. Maybe it's on the inside. 
Yeah. It's on the inside of the flap. Oh, so I can throw off the dust cover is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said earlier. There you yeah. go. I do like, I do like what is the front page where it's got the little birds. You know, I thought I thought I spilled something when I first opened I, it. Too, it looked like yes. a grease stain. Same, right? I was like, "Wait a minute, who who read my right. book like, before about this?" Brand I wasn't new. eating uh, pizza nearby. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, a little fun fact in the first world of um, library edition. So, as a doctor, or the Sherlock Frankenstein and Legion of Evil, but the other series is Doctor Andromeda and the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows. Doctor Andromeda that, is the one that shows up in Volume Two to help her out, right? Or yeah. yeah but dr andromeda his his originally original name was dr star and they made it all the way through the first trade paperback that collected just that mini series before they had to change his name because of a rights issue so if you ever find any old trade paperbacks or single issues that say dr star on them it's the same thing don't be confused all okay. right it's worth a lot of money though guys yep Literally, i had that trade paperback it, i don't know i don't know if it's worth anything but i did have it and i sold it before the name changed Trades aren't worth anything anywhere, which is why they're awesome to get. Because you can just throw them around, not worry about because it. Because you can go to like a Black Friday sale and get them for like forty percent off. Yeah, this is uh, the book that I'm going to start reading tonight. Descender, Jeff Lemire, and Dustin Nguyen. They they are together working on a three issue Robin series right now, Robin and Batman. But they did. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah, because there aren't yeah. enough Batman books out there. Oh yeah. right, yeah, they they needed another six of them every week. That's a but, Damien Robin too, or no? It's Dick Grayson. It's like a it oh, takes so place it's back in old black. continuity. Okay. Um. So not but, but not the little kid, his son Robin, not gay Robin, OG Robin. Yeah. Yeah, OG. Nightwing. Right. Yes. But when he was Robin as a kid. Okay. Mm. Um. And Dustin, Wynn, he's got a really awesome, like painted watercolor artwork. Descender, though, that ran for like, I want to say 32 issues. And then there was a follow up called Ascender that hasn't finished up quite yet, I think. But that's going to be like another 32 issues. All right. Anything else on Black Hammer? Any other thoughts? Worth a read, but definitely you're going to want at least volume one and two. Because volume one ends on a cliffhanger. I, I think you just buy volume one because if you don't, if you're not into it. Yeah. Yeah. And, what, and what, what you we get it next day from right, Amazon. 40, 40 bucks, right? Not even. Yeah. yeah okay. That price is incredible. So if you're watching this, well, it's weird because if you're watching it, maybe you read it already because you talked about it, or maybe you don't care about spoilers, which we, there's still a lot to be, you know, left to be out. You know, told. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we didn't spoil too much. We, yeah. There was just a few few things. There really wasn't. We didn't really get into anything like major. Um, Get the first volume, though, because if you are at, you end it with a, I want to know what happens to them, then yeah, you're going to want to get volume two. But if you just want the, I want to see what they're talking about. And if it doesn't connect with you for whatever, you know, for whatever reason, that's, that's, that's fine too. Um, because, you know, like we talked about earlier, other comics have done the take of, we're not going to have the established superheroes that we know from Marvel DC lore. We're going to do our own. Not everybody, likes that whether you know happens with a lot of things but um i think in this day and age though people are i don't know probably everything like post watchmen kind of feels like people are getting it more into the i'm open to new ideas but you know, i don't know also you could if you get this and just get volume one plan yourself and go oh i only read indie books i'm not i'm a true fan of the <laughs> is dark horse not indie enough for you it's indian at their number would you say they're the fourth biggest? Yeah, it, it, it changes here and there, but I would say they're. I think it, they're fourth. But image is probably solid third. Oh yeah. Well, well, it's always been the way at every comic store. All right, we got our, our DC section, got our Marvel section, got the everything else, and everything else is always a shit ton of image and dark horse. Yeah, and Scooby Doo mysteries. Right. Yeah. Or Archie. Uh, I love how all this. Like I watched the here's what's coming out this week, and they always go here's the Archie comics. I'm like. Are people watching these YouTube channels interested in Archie comics? Do you, well, do Archie you, has I, changed. Yeah. They well, I know the TV much. shows are edgy as F, but... Hey, if you want a good horror comic, I'm going to say this again, get Afterlife with Archie. That is amazing, and I wish they finished it. Is Jughead a badass in it, or what? 
Uh, Jughead is the cause of everything. The zombie apocalypse is Jughead. And well, that is, it's that okay. hat. To be fair, Biron is our Jughead, so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have the little crown hat? It's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, too, that Dark Horse does a great job of keeping their library editions in print. So if you're trying to hunt down one of the, because there's five of them now, like the three spinoffs and the two main ones. Um, if you're trying to hunt down one of the volumes and you can't find it, it's like overpriced or out of print right now, just wait a few months, it'll come back into print. Uh, they, they're, they're committed to the series. This is like their new golden egg after uh, Hellboy because they've lost so many licenses. Like they lost Aliens, Predator, Buffy. They've lost everything. So yeah. they're trying to hold on to all the, you know, creator own stuff they have. But unlike IDW, they do have some of their own stuff. Whereas Dark IDW Horse is own... really screwed by that. Yeah, Dark Horse, yeah, Dark Horse has their own stuff, yeah. Um, but this is one of their things. So they're, they'll, they'll come back into print. So if you see one and it's like, I can only find this one, this volume on eBay for 80, 80 bucks. Like, just wait. It'll, it'll come back into print. Yeah, that's a good point. Because a lot of times, you know, when, especially things that have some level of, I don't know, want to say hype, but, you know, the, like, didn't he, he win some awards for this one? Oh yeah, yeah Eisner, 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 stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so there, there's a level of if I, you know, if I didn't get it then, I'm not going to get it now. That somebody might feel. Yeah, that's the game with collected editions. It's like the FOMO thing. It's like this, this just came out. I have to get it now before it goes out of print. I can't find it for cheap. Um, I, I appreciate that Dark Horse keeps their stuff. Well, even even print. Marvel and DC are getting better when like the yeah. whales are out there. They'll just reprint them, and then the people right. spent a thousand dollars on a whale Omni are. Yeah, and I appreciate that. And it, it drives me nuts when people are like, well, it makes my collection less special now because I had this rare thousand dollar book. Yeah, even though they never want to sell it, it's the perception of value. Yeah, it's like, shut up. Like, I'd rather have as many people that can read it as much as possible. Well, I, think, I, I mean, I know it's got Black Hammer been optioned for anything. What's that? Is Black Hammer been optioned for anything? It has been. Okay. It, it got optioned early. Um, so that's the thing with Jeff Lemire, too, is like, he has like five or six comics right now that have been optioned uh sweet tooth on netflix just came out yeah. fairly recently and i think the next one to come out will probably be essex county which is like one of his first not not his first comic but one of his earliest comics um but then black hammer's been optioned i think gideon falls has been optioned so he's just like which is great because that he's just getting paid money even if, even if they don't get made he's just getting paid like paychecks you see that you um, a Canadian doing well for himself. That that uh, the other beef I have is he's a Canadian. <laughs> he might now, not like a lot now of. Now he's got words. tons of money. Has he left Canada or is he done? He has his own healthcare plan on the side, though. No, I, I I'm almost certain he still lives in Canada because Matt Kent's one of his best friends, and he always talks about how he has to like, go up north to visit him and stuff. Maybe I he think he still lives. Like, in Canada. Maybe he means Detroit. Yeah, <laughs> crossed like, that bridge into he, Windsor. He crossed over the. <laughs> The bridge. It does say Toronto, so which is a gross town. Is Biron, is Toronto your most or if you had to pick a Canadian city to be closest to okay with you? Is it Toronto? Calgary. Okay. I, I like how this just devolved into Johnny P asking Biron questions like Because I completely forgot he was Canadian. I wanted to get that in before <laughs> we wrapped it up. That's why. I, I was actually thinking that in the back of my head too. At least he's not from Ohio. There used to be like a running joke with Jeff Lemire comics that early on, I think he's kind of gravitated past this, but that his comics would all take place on a farm, include some sort of hockey player and some sort of reference to Canada. Mm. He kind of had like a theme going on there, but I think he's kind of grown well, past Black that. Hammer and, and Gideon Falls, heavy into the barn theme. Yeah. Right, the farm thing's there, yeah. Well, writers like to put, put, their, put their mark in things all the time of, you know, something to expect. Or, it's like or when Tarantino and his foot fetish. Yeah. Didn't Spawn always have uh, a Felix the Cat in? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because that was, yeah, that was like an Easter egg, too. Yeah. yeah. I tried to get back into Spawn because I want to support, hey, we're sticking with the two ninety nine price point. And I couldn't. It's just awful. It is yeah. the worst junk food comic you can read. Speaking of two ninety nine, dollars Saga's coming back with that yeah. same price tag. Issue 55 drops in January. I think I might have to pull that one. My uh, my wife warned me that I probably wouldn't like it. Saga? Yeah. Although I did see some breastfeeding in it, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah. What's the cover of the first hard the hard first hardcover's got yeah. got that on the cover? And it's a Taco Bell commercial now, too. 
Oh, I don't know. Am I missing? I, that might have gone over my they're, head. They're just cosplaying with the horns. And the, and oh, okay. Kieran, do, you, do you have a favorite breastfeeding artist, Kieran, or no? I celebrate them all. <laughs> all equally. I didn't know if you had certain styles. I, I am a card carrying member of the La Leche League. It's a breastfeeding advocacy group. Yeah, I know. Cool. And, and you're in the No Rerolls Association, too. That's right. For a game I hate because rerolls make the game last longer. What about rifles? Rifles? Yeah. I only have one, and it's just a 22. All right. Uh, that, that's it. Anything else on Black Hammer we have to cover? Uh, fun book. We all enjoyed it. Um, five slurpees. To, yeah, five slurpees. Looking forward to reading more on it. I probably I have the first uh, of the next of a, a world, world of. of. Um, I probably won't crack it open. I will crack it properly, of course. Yeah, do but I probably won't the opening. Yeah, of course. Um, but I won't actually probably read it. Just I just I have other stuff I gotta I gotta get in. You know what I mean? Um, but it'll make it that much. Um, that much better when you know maybe i'll maybe i'll pick up two and three just so i have them ready to go when the time comes they'll look great in your shelfie of course they will cool well uh taylor thanks for coming on go check out his show taylor talks comics that is youtube and podcast or just youtube now just youtube and i cleverly did an overview of all five library editions and that video will be on my channel ready to go if you just want like an overview of what they look like um and that's taylor talks comics on youtube Taylor Talks Comics on YouTube. Um, you've got, you know, talking about your favorite thing to, things that you enjoy. Also, you do interviews and, you know, a lot of sometimes you'll. Yeah, I actually, to sorry to interrupt you, but I have an interview with uh, Biron's favorite, Omar, lined up. Oh, nice. Yeah, so um, I'm doing the interview like December 8th, I think. I don't know. When, it's not going to be live. So I don't know when it'll hit the channel, but I'm interviewing him. I'm trying to do a new monthly segment where I interview a comic book, comic book fan. But he's my first guest I have lined up. I'm a big fan of Omar's. Nice. So go check that one out. Subscribe. Yeah, he gets free on these, the lucky bastard. Be around. Always looking for that free angle. What yep. a four. Uh, so subscribe to Zlurpcast. Ring the bell. You get notified when we have a new episode going up. Listen, they go up every week at midnight. I want you to ring the bell. Bash the bell. But I get it. If you're just like, a, hey, I'm up. It's 11.59 on a friday i'm waiting till it or no on a saturday right saturday. yeah and i'm waiting to cross over cross the rubicon if you will you can do that and when as soon as it pops up we have people that are waiting for it and then that next sunday morning we read the rants like yeah that's fucking suck Ugh. like we read that the next morning and it makes for a wonderful sunday morning so if you want to join that club feel free as well follow on social media ads slurpcast join the discussion and what's this Viron? do we have one more thing to tell them to join you should join our discord we actually have people talking on there now yeah i set it up a year ago as a goof just to lock in the name and then extreme like, jp made us feel bad for not using it and then no extreme is the oh, start he's it. like hey uh, i'm starting to use this and talk to my other group of friends so uh i'm like other group um pardon me <laughs> And talking to my blood just, bowl friends yeah and then we're like, oh, I, I need to get i need to get on there friends yeah i need to get on there brian sent me the link to it i need, I need to get it's on, on the facebook page if you look at slurpcast okay. it's on the mm -hmm. facebook page and on the uh, facebook group as well slurpcast discussion so if you're looking for it it's right on there i think they expire in a week that they usually have like a shelf life the link but um we can get another one if you need to just let us know brian can uh, hand write it on the napkin at thanksgiving and hand it over to you I'll see him Thursday, so that'll, that'll work. Or not Thursday, I think it, whatever. Someday I'll see him this weekend. Okay, that sounds fantastic. Otherwise, anything else? If we do the, do the thing. Okay. Florida!
Brought to you by Nuffles. Bet you can't just roll a one.